This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about the cryptocurrency, which is called XRP, often called Ripple. If you're interested in learning how to make money in both bull or bear markets, or just want to see what I'm trading or investing in, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So XRP is currently the third biggest cryptocurrency. It's second only to Bitcoin and Ethereum. Current market cap of XRP is about 12.6 billion. If we look at a chart of XRP versus the US dollar, we can see that it's basically gone nowhere since approximately May of 2017. We can see this classic spike and crash. In this video, after watching this video, you're gonna see many of the reasons for this. So XRP is a cryptocurrency, as I said. It, is, it has been issued by an actual corporation uh, a company that's based in San Francisco called Ripple. They used to be called Ripple Labs, but it looks like they're going by Ripple now. And what they basically did was this. They started their company and then they printed up or pre-mined, however you want to define it, uh, they printed up 100 billion XRP tokens. And their main line of business is basically dumping these tokens, selling them to retail investors. And then they take the cash from that, they take the US dollars that they raise, and they, they use it for advertising, they use it to bribe celebrities like Ellen DeGeneres and Stephen Colbert to get publicity for the, uh, for the cryptocurrency. They also use it to pay companies to use their software and to use XRP. We're gonna talk a little bit more about MoneyGram later in this video. So this is a very, I think it's a very sinister business plan basically dumping on retail investors. They've sold $1.25 billion worth of XRP since 2016. And again, this is a centralized token. It's controlled and issued by a corporation, very different from Bitcoin, which is completely decentralized and which is not run by any corporations. Here's a link to Wikipedia where I got that number from that they've sold approximately $1.25 uh, billion this is millions, but you can see there's a comma here. So billion worth of XRP between the fourth quarter of 2016 and the second quarter of 2020. And then, as I said, they take this money, they use it to, for example, uh, in this example, they made a donation to uh, one of Ellen DeGeneres' uh, charities or foundations, and uh, they did this to get, uh, to get a slot on the show and uh, to get some publicity. They did something similar as well for The Late Show with uh, Stephen Colbert. So that's basically how the company functions. Now let's take a look at its founder. This guy is fairly notorious. And what I'm what I'm going to do here is I'm going to explore a little bit of this person's personal life and business life that I've gleaned from the internet. This is just stuff I've read online. I don't know Jed personally. Uh, I don't know if any of this is true. But when you start to dig into this guy, a lot of disturbing stuff comes up. But I will lead with a disclaimer. I don't know if this is true or not. Maybe he's a great guy. Uh, but I'll let you decide for yourselves. Uh, so he is a, uh, he's the founder. He started Mt. Gox, which we'll talk about. And he is also one of the founders of Ripple Labs. Uh, I'm going to link to a couple articles about him. If you read up on him, you'll hear that he has sort of this history. Normally, I don't like to dig into people's personal lives, but he has this history of sort of starting things and then bailing on his friends, his founders, and his family. So he left his, his first wife and young children for another woman. Um, he started the, uh, the famous Bitcoin exchange that got hacked, Mt. Gox, and he sold it to Mark Carpellas in 2011. And there's a lot of evidence uh, online that McCaleb was aware of security flaws in Mt. Gox. And there is some evidence that he may have even stolen Bitcoin off of Mt. Gox before he sold it to Carpellis. I don't know if this is true again. You'll have to make your own decision, but there are allegations of this online. After he sold Mt. Gox, he started Ripple Labs with a couple other guys and almost immediately had a falling out with the company. And when this happened, he went on a Ripple message board and basically told everyone that he was going to dump all 9 billion XRP that he owned. So again, remember Ripple Labs, they printed up 100 billion uh, and Jed McCallop got $9 billion. So again, you can sort of see this is, uh, this is very different from how Bitcoin started. And uh, this is, you can see this is a bit of a scheme from the beginning where the founders, not only do they get stock in their own company, which, which makes sense and is fair, but they have this huge amount of coins that they can then uh, dump over the coming years. So McCallop got mad at Ripple. They had a falling out. He left and said he was going to dump 
all his XRP, which is basically 9% of the total supply, and it was a much bigger percentage of the circulating supply, he was immediately sued by Ripple, and now he's limited regarding how much Ripple he can sell. But if you look at his wallets, and I'll link to them in this video in the description notes below, you can see that he dumps Ripple, he dumps XRP every single day. He's always selling. He's been selling for the last uh, few years, basically every single day. I think he's been selling about $500,000 worth every single day. This guy's a multi-billionaire, presumably. So then he left Ripple Labs and he went and started Stellar XLM, which is another garbage coin like XRP. So it gives you sort of a flavor for this guy. He's definitely an altcoin uh, guy. There's a ni not a nice word for that, which I won't use. Um, here is the, uh, the the link I got that claims that uh, that possibly McCaleb was aware of the flaws at Mt. Gox and possibly even uh, stole uh, stole some of the coins. So here we have, uh, he sold an estimated 1.74 million XRP per day in 2020. Uh, the bad news is he still owns 4 billion XRP tokens and he continues to sell every day. I'll link to these so you can, you can take a look at them. Uh, this one in particular is quite interesting because it has a link to McCaleb's various wallets. So you can actually see how much he's selling. You can verify it for yourself. It looks like in the last few days, he's actually increased the amount he's selling. He's selling closer to 5 million per day. So whenever the price of XRP pops up, I think you'll find that he sells more. So the real bag holders here are the public or retail investors who are somehow persuaded that XRP is going to be uh, going to be something. Meanwhile, there's been quite a bit of executive turnover of the comp at the company. This suggests that at least insiders are not bullish on uh, XRP's prospects. If if you were bullish on it, you wouldn't leave your job there. This is the uh, the uh, the head of XRP Markets left in uh, looks like April of 2020. Uh, he had joined in 2016, and then early in the early in the year, one of their key engineers, Evan Schwartz, left after six and a half years with a company. Now, obviously, we never know why people are leaving, but when you do see high up executives leaving, uh, that can be a sign, especially when you combine that with the fact that the CEO, as well as Jed McCaleb, are dumping XRP as fast as they can. Here's the link to an article. Uh, where he, t he talks about posting on Ripple Labs message board that he's going to dump all of his remaining, remaining XRP. This is a fascinating, fascinating article. You have to decide for yourself how true you think it is, uh, but this is kind of documents uh, Jed McCaleb, how he treats uh, his friends and how he treats uh, various founders, as well as I'll link to a Quora answer from someone who uh, was a CTO uh, or still is a CTO at Ripple to give you an idea into Jed McCaleb's character. So again, if you're buying XRP, you are buying it from Jed McCaleb. You're buying it from the CEO who's selling, and you're also buying it from Ripple Labs, who continues to uh, to dump it. Uh, here's another article suggesting that the CEO and co-founder don't believe in XRP because they're selling so much of it. Uh, fast forward to uh, Ripple is always is bragging about their various contacts and how many banks are actually using uh, XRP as sort of a, a substitute for SWIFT or, or money transfer. And this is a very interesting article that digs into one of the biggest ones that's gotten the most publicity, which is MoneyGram. This is an article from February 2020, where it turns out, and MoneyGram is a, uh, it's a financial services company. Its stock has been uh, going down for a very long time. But it turns out if you read the, uh, the 8K, the SEC filing from MoneyGram, it turns out that Ripple actually pays them to use their software. So in the third and fourth quarter, Ripple paid them $11 million. So this is one way you can get customers. You can either sell them things or you can give them uh, you can give them sort of bribes to use your product. And what this article suggested, there's a lot more of this uh, going on. They call it Ripple market development fees, uh, but basically it is a fee that compensates them for using their system or it's some sort of kickback uh, it's hard to really tell, uh, but I'll link to this article so you can read it. And this article is also interesting because it suggests that uh, multiple institutions are receiving incentives like this to sign up with uh, with Ripple. So of these 200 financial institutions, 200 financial institutions that are using uh, Ripple's technologies, 
they uh, it may be that all of them are actually just getting free cash from Ripple. And also in this article, the, the CEO, Mr. Garlinghouse, confirms that Ripple basically would not be prof profitable or even cash flow positive without selling XRP. That's their main business, as we talked about from the beginning. They printed up all these tokens, all this fake money, and the company's dumping it, executives are dumping it, etc. Uh, here's a very interesting article by Nick Carter that argues that the banks will never be able to use Ripple simply because of very structural reasons uh, like Basel, uh, the regulations in Basel, uh, Basel III. And I would suggest that there's another, there's another part to this, which is simply that why would the U.S. banks, if they could create their own technology, why would they decide to enrich Ripple Labs? by adopting the XRP system. This would be as stupid as when Mike, when IBM gave Microsoft complete dominance and control over PC operating systems. And um, this would be something similar. Why would, why would uh, US banks ever do this when they could just come up with their own internal system or collaborate among each other? So let's summarize. Ripple initially printed up about 100 billion XRP. That's theoretically the most that will ever exist. But of course, they can print more if they want to, so there's no hard guarantee. But they still have approximately 60 billion XRP left to dump on naive retail investors. Now, this is good for Ripple Labs as a company. It means they can continue to make cash as long as people are dumb enough to buy XRP. And so if you can own stock in Ripple, it might be, it might be a good thing. But if you're buying Ripple, you're basically funding this company. And just because Ripple Labs does well, and I don't think they are going to do well, uh, but they do have this sort of cash cow where they can just sell these digital tokens for a very long time as, until uh, sort of until, until people figure out what they're doing. But it doesn't mean that if you buy an XRP token that you will benefit from it. So the company has about 60 billion XRP left to dump. Jed McCaleb has approximately 4 billion XRP left to dump. And so the question I always have for XRP investors is, do you want to buy XRP from these guys? Why would you ever do this? Why would you give them liquidity? Why would you give them cash? These are basically very sophisticated technologists and uh, businessmen who are running a scam, in my opinion. And again, that's just my opinion. But I think it's, it's incredibly evil uh, what, what they are doing. Final contrast, Ripple Network is just run by a series of servers. It's not mined uh, like Bitcoin is. And again, XRP is a cryptocurrency that's run and issued by a corporation. Ripple Labs, Ripple can decide in the future to increase the supply to, uh, to 200 billion if they want to, because it's fun to just print up your own money and sell it to naive investors. By contrast, Bitcoin is completely decentralized. It's not run by a corporation. It uses proof of work, which secures the whole network. You, this uses a lot of energy, but on the other hand, it uh, helps to secure the network, and it's curr currently securing about $215 billion worth of value. And Bitcoin, unlike XRP, is uh, there's only going to be $21 million. It's not run by a corporation where they can just raise the supply limit. So for all these reasons, I think that XRP is a complete joke. Uh, I don't see why it's not being more closely regulated or shut down by the government for fraud. Uh, but I am uh, very bullish on Bitcoin for it's sort of the anti, uh, the opposite of XRP. Let me know your questions and comments and uh, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button if you found this video helpful and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when I post my next YouTube video. I'd be very interested in knowing your thoughts on XRP, especially if you're an expert in it. And uh, thanks a lot for listening. I'll see you in the next video.